All right, we're starting off uh, the integral unit with 4.2a. Um, and so the first thing is we're going to review sigma notation. So sigma notation, sigma is just uh, this Greek letter um, that looks like an E. And this just represents, this is just a shorthand method of uh, representing terms that we want to add together. And so the way that we would say this is this is the summation from 2 to 5 um, of the quantity a sub i. So the index is um, the variable that we're going to be, uh, that holds the value that we're going to plug in for i. Um, so we start off with the lower bound, which in this case is 2, and we're going to increment by 1 until we get to our upper bound, which is 5. So uh, the first plug in 2 in for i, so we get a sub 2 plus increment i to 3, plug in 3 in for i, a sub 3, plus a sub 4, and then the final term that we plug in for i is going to be the upper bound, a sub 5. Okay, let's look at example 1. Example 1 says, uh, find the summation from 2 to 4 for our quantity i squared plus 1. So we start off with the lower bound, 2, plug in 2 in for i, so we get 2 squared plus 1, Okay, we'll figure that out that uh, sum later. Uh, next, plus increment the 2 to 3, 3 squared plus 1, plus, and then finally, um, our upper bound stops at 4, so plug in 4 in for i, and we're going to get 4 squared plus 1, which is uh, 16 plus 1, 17. So we get 5 plus 10 plus 17, which is 32. Okay, summation formulas, these are shortcut um, uh, rules that will allow us to uh, find the sum a lot faster if they fall into these categories. So first, if I have the summation from 1 to n for just the constant 1, then uh, my sum will just be my upper bound, which is n. Okay, for 2, uh, the second rule, uh, the summation from 1 to n for um, our quantity i then rather than adding all these up one by one, we can use uh, the, short, um, the shortcut rule here, which just takes the upper bound, n, whatever that value is, n times n plus 1 divided by 2. And we can go ahead and memorize this as well, n squared over 2 plus n over 2. This is just simply um, uh, foiling this out and writing it as se uh, separate fractions. Um, uh, this isn't exactly necessary, but if you know these values, um, or if you, if you know this in terms of separate fractions, then it will make things easier once we get to finding um, the exact, um, uh, we're, we're trying to find the limit uh, for uh, the exact area under the curve. Okay. Uh, the third one here, uh, the summation from 1 to n for, I, for a quantity i squared. Uh, the, the rule is simply n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. And these n values are just being picked from the upper bound. Okay, if we were to fold this out and write this as separate fractions, it's n cubed over 3 plus n squared over 2 plus n over 6. Uh, finally, the fourth rule, if I have uh, the summation from 1, to, from 1 to n for a quantity i cubed, then it's simply just going to be n squared times n plus 1 squared divided by 4. And here we have um, fold everything out as separate fractions. And finally, another rule is um, helping us to rewrite it in the form that will allow us to plug in uh, the uh, plug-in values a little bit easier or make our substitution a little bit easier. Whenever you see a constant, we can always pull that constant uh, in front. And when we do that, that allows us to um, uh, narrow down the portion that we need to substitute. All right, example two, summation from one to, eight, one to eight for our uh, quantity, 3i squared plus 2. Anytime I have um, two terms that are separated by plus or minus, I can split this up into uh, two different summations. So I'm going to treat uh, these as separate problems and find the sum of each. So 3i squared and also the sum for 2. Um, I'm going to rewrite this, pull the 3 out, it's a constant. And then I'm going to pull the 2 out and um, uh, put a 1 here. So this allows us to, or allows me to see uh, 
uh, the rules a little bit easier, the rules that we want to um, apply. So the sum from 1 to 8, uh, one to eight for i squared is simply just going to be um, the, uh, the third rule here, which is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. So now my n value is going to be 8, so then replace 8 in for n, so 8 times 9 times 17, all divided by 6. Okay, so that's this part here. Plus 2 times, and then um, the summation from 1 to 8 uh, for quantity 1 is just going to be the first rule. So n is going to be 8, then, then I can replace um, my summation with simply 8. So my coefficient is 2, 2 times 8 is 16, and then I multiply all this together and combine it to be 612 plus 16, which is 628. Okay, example 3, summation from 1 to 10 for i plus 2, quantity i plus 2, quantity squared. And we can't quite split this up into separate terms yet. We need to fold this out, so write this as i squared plus 4i plus 4. Now I'm going to rewrite this as um, uh, three separate sums. So summation of i squared, summation of 4i, which I can pull the 4 in front, and then summation of 4, I can pull the 4 in front as well. And now I'm just going to make a substitution, a clean substitution. Um, here I can replace this with the third rule. So n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. Uh, 4 is just a coefficient. Uh, uh, the sum from 1 to 10 for i, that's just going to be the second rule. So n times n plus 1 all over 2. And finally, this gets replaced with n. My n value is just going to be 10, so 4 times 10. Combine all this together, 385 plus 220 plus 40 gives me 645. Okay, example 4. Uh, the sum from 1 to n for a quantity 1 over n times k squared minus 1. So now, instead of i, uh, uh, the index is now going to be uh, represented by k. I'm going to try to uh, distribute this through and see what we can um, see how we can split this up. So 1 over n k squared minus 1 over n, and I can split this up into two separate uh, um, sums. Think of n as a constant. So I'm going to pull the n out in front okay, in both cases. So I'm going to apply the rule for k squared and apply the rule for 1. So k squared, this is just going to be the third rule. So n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. My n value in this case is simply going to be n. Okay, it stays as n. So n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6 minus 1 over n, and then this is the first rule. So this gets replaced with my upper bound, which is, remains as n. So my final answer will have n um, uh, without it being replaced um, uh, with, a, with a value. So I can try to simplify this. n's cancel out. I'm left with n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6 minus 1. And uh, foil this out. I get 2n squared plus 3n plus 1 over 6 minus uh, common denominator, 6 over 6. And all this becomes 2n squared plus 3n minus 5 all over 6. So 1 minus 6 becomes negative 5.